Hi guys, Tracy here with my first process video for a while. This is a photo that I took at the Crop and Create. It's just one of the photo booth photos with me and a bunch of my the people who I met there. Um, and I'm looking through the, uh, I have the Dear Lizzie Lucky Charm collection, I have the Amy Tangerine Yes Please collection, and I have, I also pulled out the Dear Lizzie Fifth and Frolic collection, and um, that piece of paper, that bokeh paper, was in with my Dear Lizzie collection, because uh, I bought it at the same time, but it's actually from the Maggie Holmes collection, and I thought it matched some of the clothes that some of us were wearing and some of the stuff in the background. So I pulled out the Maggie Holmes collection as well. And so uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. I think I'm just kind of having a look through the paper, maybe. Um, hmm. Oh, and there's Maya came for a little visit. I guess I should have edited this. I am often in a hurry to get my um, videos done. So I uh, I must have been looking for doilies. I'm in my new scrap room and so I don't know exactly where everything is yet. Uh, that piece of lined, uh, sorry, that piece of handwritten paper is from the Maggie Holmes collection, but I thought I wanted it in a smaller scale, so I grabbed my 6x6 Maggie Holmes pa paper pad so I could um, have the smaller print of that. And then I'm just going through my Lucky Charm collection and picking out, uh, there was that scrap already cut of the triangle paper on the cream background. And then I also um, cut myself a piece of the floral paper. I thought that floral was really pretty. It has just a hint of yellow in it. And uh, yeah, it's not too overbearing. The flowers are quite small. So I'm just going to layer these three pieces of paper and the doily together in a way that they're overlapping so you can see little bits of each one. I'm going to do some outlining so I grabbed my Stampin' Up! Uh, background um, grid paper. I just use that in case I go off. My other um, craft mat that I used to use before I got this new gray Martha Stewart one that you see. Um, I say new, it's about a year old, but my one before that was all um, yuckied up with tons of, of lines where I went off the paper so I'm trying to not do any outlining directly on my grid anymore um, so that's why I have the Martha Stewart paper. So now I'm just looking for the photo that, that I took of uh, those layers before I took them apart to outline them and I was just using my Zig Writer. That's what I usually use. Sometimes I'll use my American Crafts Precision pens for outlining too but my Zig is easy to grab and it's just the one size that I like. So there's my Kenmore half size uh, sewing machine. It's the same as the Genome Sew Mini, um, but it's available at Sears and I am using Coates Metallic Thread. I got this thread at Michael's and it's just in the sewing section with all the other thread. And so it should be pretty easy to find. I've gotten a lot of questions about it. So the brand is Coates. And so here I am deciding after the fact to sew on my layers. So I'm kind of pulling back some of the papers in order to sew on that floral paper. And I'm thinking I might want to, and I'm just using glossy accents to finish the thread so it won't pull through. And I might add thread on the other pieces of paper too, on the other layers, but I hadn't decided at this point and I knew I didn't want to sew it down yet because I might want to tuck some things underneath. So I chose one of the little mason jars from the Dear Lizzie paper, and that's the Lucky Charm paper. And I cut it out, and then I um, t tied a little piece of embroidery floss in red. Uh, a lot of the papers that I'm using are have pinks, um, but that mason jar, the reason I picked it is that some of the flowers in that in that little heart have red and I have red in that picture and so I want to bring a teensy bit of red into the layout just so that it's not um, I, I kind of feel like I stand out a lot in that photo because I'm wearing bright red and everybody else is wearing blues and stuff um, so I want to bring some red into the layout so that I don't stand out so much <laughs> um, so there's red in the heart and then I put some red uh, string on the um, mason jar 
So now I'm just going through all my drawers and picking out some die cuts. These are the die cuts that came with the Maggie Holmes collection. And uh, I wanted to use that ampersand, but it's just too neutral. I wanted, um, I wanted embellishments that were going to be bright because the layering papers that I used, all of the pattern papers are not very bright. So I wanted something to kind of stand up with the with the very bright background that I chose. And so these are some of the cut apart labels and tags that come on a sheet in the Maggie Holmes collection. So I'm thinking about using those. And so I'm gonna use my trimmer to trim off a couple of borders there. Not sure which one I'm gonna use, but I end up using the butterfly one just based on how I thought it looked up there in the corner. So I thought I'll use it there and then I'll figure out another place for it. And it turns out this little below the photo area is a good spot because it covers up some of the um, layers that were sort of competing with each other down at the bottom. I'm putting a dear note that's a Maggie Holmes lucky sticker on the mason jar and another Maggie Holmes flag sticker that's yellow with the butterfly up at the top and I also have those one two three tags the little mini tags those are from the Maggie Holmes die cuts and now I'm just uh, putting on some American Crafts glitter tape and that tape it, it looks quite bright under my in the video and under my lights but it is not as as bright as it seems it's it's a bit more of a light blue um, and so I just used two pieces of it there in the top just because I wanted it to um, span the gap between those two pieces of pattern paper and so um, I cut a uh, flag like a fishtail type of flag um, on the end of it and then I'm just uh, placing it butt up against each other so that it looks like one thick piece of glitter tape basically trimming off some of my edges and now I'm going to do some sewing so here I sewed on the bottom part like just right along the bottom of the photo and that's a zigzag stitch and this is again using my gold thread and then I put a little bit more not all the way across but uh, at the top of the photo and then I'm just going to put a little bit more stitches randomly around the layout in places where things where layers overlap and I'm using mostly zigzag stitches here and now at this point I'm switching to a straight stitch and I want to put some extra stitches here by this um, glitter tape but my sewing machine is giving me some grief what has actually happened is it has become unthreaded and when I rethreaded it I only did the needle I didn't do the part that goes up and down and so every time I sew it gets all bunched up underneath and is making a mess so I was thinking that maybe I'm sewing over too many layers for this sewing machine but that actually wasn't the case and I'll figure that out a little bit later so I'm just I gave up on that and I'm just trimming up all my thread ends and putting my embellishments back in place I have pop dotted that um, little mason jar and now I am attaching these little tags with glue and then I'm also going to use my tiny attacher to put them on I, I kind of have this thing about not wanting tags to be floating I either want them to be tucked underneath of something so they're sticking out or I want them to be sewn on or threaded on or in this case stapled on so that they look kind of like they belong and that's just my own personal thing like I see them on other people's layouts and they look fine I just there's something about it I have like a mental block when it comes to using tags so I actually use my grid paper because doilies are a little bit see-through so I use my grid paper to help me keep my journaling in line there and um, just added the embellishments which were already stuck to one another so it's just a matter of putting them on the layout and now I'm doing some sewing and this is the point where I realize I had threaded my machine wrong so bear with me here um, I don't do a lot of editing of these videos just so that they're faster it allows me to do more videos um, if each if I had to edit each one it would take so long to make that I would probably it would take away some of the fun of making videos and so I probably wouldn't make as many so you'll have to bear with me in the boring parts I just leave them in um, so there I use stays on red stays on ink on that tab which is from the Maggie Holmes collection it comes with the uh, collection pack when you get it and now my sewing machine is working well so I got to stitch over that and I took out my wood veneers and now I added a little tiny attacher staple 
there in the top cluster. And now these are some letter stickers, some thickers. They are in the Subway font, which is one of my favorite fonts. I love Subway. And it, they're in this great color, which I had never seen before, um, just because I don't shop in person very often and sometimes you just can't tell the color of things online so anyways I got these at the crop there were three different stores there and when I saw this color I thought oh my god I need to have these these thickers because they're just such a great bold color and they're kind of like a red and a pink at the same time they're great and so I'm just figuring out how to put these two words together so that the P hangs down and doesn't cause too much trouble with the word create, the P in crop. And uh, yeah, now I'm looking through my mini market stickers and I picked out, those ones are peppermint and they're almost exactly the same color as the thickers. So I have those in mind, but I thought I'd try these blue ones on cream, but they're gonna get lost with the cream papers that I'm putting them on. So I quickly decided to go with the peppermint. And it's such a perfect match in color. I couldn't not go with these stickers. So I'm just going to put them right beside the mason jar. And I think that works well. It makes the mason jar look more like it's in place when with having something on the other side of it. And I'm going to fiddle with those letters because once I put the mini markets in place because they're all straight it really was making the word create look funny because it was up and down so I had to straighten it out a little bit. And with foam stickers because you can kind of move them you got to be careful when you're that you're putting them down straight. Now I put that asterisk up in the top and this is what I sometimes do especially when I'm using a bold colored thicker is I'll bring some of that thicker um, color and texture to other places of my layouts by using um, either the asterisks or the ampersands or brackets or whatever just to kind of have the tie the title in with the rest of the layout and so that's what that asterisk is up there and now I'm just going through my wood veneer pieces and trying to decide which pieces I want to use I knew I wanted to add three pieces of wood veneer and so I went with these three so there's an arrow up at the top and then that asterisk. I love asterisks and I'm running out of them. I don't think they make them anymore. And then that and then that geotag up by the date. I like putting geotags by dates even though they're not location. So uh, thanks so much for watching everybody.